Howdy, friends. Welcome to 50's Cheese. My name is Clem, and the boss sent me out here to the garage to show you these movies, since he's embarrassed to be seen with them. What we have here are highlights of cheap old movies that don't really have highlights. And just some scenes that aren't quite as bad as others. From the golden age of B-movies. And since Misery Loves Company, I'll be joining you in watching them. Only I'll be commenting on them as well. You can too, only nobody will hear you. The movies we will be viewing are from a collection entitled 50 Sci-Fi Classics. Their definition of sci-fi is a little flexible. Few lean more towards fantasy. A, a number of them are horror wannabes. Some are action-adventure movies, just in a bizarre, or at least exotic, setting. Some are D, none of the above. Let's just say these are the kind of movies you would have seen on Mystery Science Theater 3000. In fact, a few of them were. The rest probably weren't good enough. I don't want to mislead you more than I have to. These are not, strictly speaking, first-time viewing reactions. The ones from MST3K I've seen before, of course. But what you will be seeing are mashups of two viewings. One to get my bearings, and one to catch whatever I missed the first time. And they won't be the full movie, just highlights, or lowlights to be more accurate. And the more memorable scenes. So, with all that in mind, let's watch the movie. Today's thrilling adventure, <laughs> that's a joke, uh, is an interesting cinematic endeavor entitled either Monstrosity or The Atomic Brain. It started filming in 1958 as Monstrosity. The original director was a cinematographer who had never directed before, and halfway through, the production company went bankrupt. A few years later, when production started up again, the director was gone. The chair was filled by one of the producers, a writer who had also never directed before. After its release as Monstrosity, television rights were sold to a distributor who changed the title to The Atomic Brain. Your guess is as good as mine. But this background story is probably more interesting than the movie itself, so let's watch it and find out. Can death be outwitted? Is the secret of eternal life Ethereal just and around turgid that corner? narration. That's Today, quite a combination. Patches up mutilated bodies, transplanting human skin, eyes, limbs, even vital organs. Is the next step the transplantation of the human brain? Many scientists answer yes, but they pause and add a grim warning. For in the ancient folk legends, tales are told of blood sucking vampires crawling out of graves to live on the bodies of helpless victims. Is man now doomed to produce a race of ever-living monstrosities, worse than the vampires of legend? Will ruthless men and women of great wealth and power greedily buy or steal the living bodies of the young and beautiful so their brains may live on forever? Such questions may seem fanciful, but at this very moment, scientists are working on the answer Unfortunately, to those scientists are geologists. And human bodies are used. This girl was buried in a nearby cemetery yesterday. Only a few hours ago, her body was stolen. By Dr. Otto Frank. Frank? And brought to the I think that might have been shortened. He has grafted My a living name, animal's brain. It's pronounced Frankenstein. If the experiment works, the next step will be the transplantation of a human brain. The brain cells are being reactivated by an atomic fission. What fission? It's a vat of dry ice. Has he found the way to outwit death? Or has he created another? Monstrosity. I can't help but think the original title card and maybe credits would have come in over that sting. Especially since the scene changes abruptly. Now, how else would we get to the cemetery? It reminds me a lot of Barney Fife. 
Deep below, Dr. Frank takes the chance of smashing his way into a newly sealed vault. His experiments cannot continue without another body. Did that thing come from? Inside the vault, a body waits. This is one of the doctor's mistakes, a monstrosity an animal's brain grafted to a human body. Leaving the dead watchman, the monstrosity carried the girl's body out of the vault. It fears and obeys one master, Dr. Frank. the doctor carefully prepared for another transplant. This body had been in the vault for only a few hours. Chances seemed better this time. Still, Dr. Frank was doubtful. Tissue in dead bodies deteriorates rapidly. Where were the live, fresh bodies he'd been promised? Supply chain issues? He bitterly resents that every step forward depends on the whim of a miserly old woman brooding upstairs in her bedroom. And Hetty March wonders. Has she been a fool, squandering money on this strange experiment? Money hoarded through a long, greedy lifetime, each day more money, each day death getting closer. Ah, but to start life again in a brand new body, beautiful and young, no price can be too high for that. Too That's the Austrian girl? Dino Rogue, 18, no family, pleasing personality, whatever that might mean. Hmm? Thick ankles, pimply face. But she always smiles when she's spoken to, very likely. Well, application forms for a servant girl don't usually include bust, waist, and hip measurement. Mm -hmm. All three will be here tomorrow, and then you can choose. At Greenhaven Cemetery, the body snatchers brutally murdered night watchman Robert Payne, 62, who evidently interrupted his killers during their ghoulish task. His neck was broken. The imprint of a huge pair of hands was found on his throat. It's the opinion of the police that the same gang that has previously... Ring for Dr. Frank. So that's what he was doing. Hey, I had a raincoat like that back in first grade. Nothing must go wrong. There's 
sign of life. Watch. to a Three Stooges movie than a serious, <laughs> serious attempt at a horror film. Who am I kidding? Sykes, pardon me, but how far is Hollywood from here? Are you going to Hollywood? No such luck. I'm what's known as a born domestic. For the next 12 months, I'll be scrubbing floors and making beds. But when my time's up, Hollywood will look out. That's strange. A foreign domestic agency paid my passage, too. I'm from Vienna, Austria. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. I'm from England. No. Is this your first trip? Yes. I'm awfully excited. <laughs> Por favor. I know speak English very good. Are you going to work for Mrs. March, too? This sounds like a sister act. You too? Nina Rose? Yes, sir. Anita Gon Gonzalez? Beatrice Mullins, sir. Eh? That's right. Are you Mr. March? No, I work for Mrs. March. Come along. Three new bodies, fresh, live, young bodies. No families or friends within thousands of miles. No one to ask embarrassing questions when they disappear. Can you imagine an L.A. freeway today with that amount of traffic? Victor wondered which one is March with. There's your new home, girls. <sighs> Gives me the shivers. Aren't there any neighbors? No. Are there any other servants? No, but I don't think you're going to find it boring. little place this is. What was that? No one's to leave this house without permission. Now, hurry along. Hurry up. Now go. Luggage. 
turn round. Slowly. Get the doctor. Get the doctor. As with the other bodies stolen from cemeteries, the nerve endings of the brain were too far gone to receive a proper transplant. The experiment had failed to produce anything more than a walking, breathing, zombie-like creature. But the doctor permitted her to wander about the laboratory. She was quite harmless and, at times, even amusing. Charming, isn't she? Did you want something? Uh, Mrs. March is waiting for you. The girls have arrived. I want them examined immediately. Very well. This way. Victor, the doctor can conduct the examination perfectly. <laughs> what an old spoil spot I am. <laughs> Have you disconnected the phone? Can't I depend on you for anything? Won't it be nice when those girls start calling police? Employment agencies, immigration authorities, consulates. There will be no phone calls. Stand up, my dear. I've got the same measurements as Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> the lucky girl? Yeah. Allow me to be the first to offer congratulations. <laughs> to both of you. <laughs> For me? Well, more Three Stooges music. Come on. Come on. Your room is in the basement, Anita. Nina, your room is upstairs, right across from the top of the stairs. I'll have to show you. She's not in her room. Yes. Victor left a little while ago. Maybe she went with him. She didn't get out of this prison without permission, that's for sure. But she would have said goodbye. Why should she? We only met her yesterday. I don't blame her for not wanting to sleep in the basement. It's funny, though. I'm starting to Mrs. suspect B was Dick Van Dyke's dialogue coach for Mary Poppins. This house gives me the creeps. 
She doesn't even have any uniforms for us. See, what in the world do you think you're doing? She told us last night to clean and polish in here. Look at your hands. That will leave a stain on them. Now, now don't argue. Go in and wash them immediately. You can put the things away after Nina cleans them. Mrs. March, where is Anita? Anita? Oh. She left. Last night. I would like to give notice, too. I will discuss it with you another time. They're sure getting their money's worth out of that dry ice. Nina! Nina! Come here this instant! Yes, Mrs. Match? Your name is it Nina. But, Mrs. Matt, she's got polish all over hands, and I'm not doing anything. I don't want you running up and down stairs. Those pretty legs of yours will get ugly muscles. Send Nina to me. Yes, ma'am. B, come with me. I want to show you something. without taking her clothes. I think we'd better get out of there, fast. B, I'd hate to go if she's still here. You go now if you go with me. Last experiment before Dr. Frank would be ready. But this was the most critical of all the experiments. For the first time, the grafting operation would be performed on a living human body. And the brain would come from the doctor's favorite cat. Anita was ready. She almost saw us. Let's wait a while to make sure we won't run into her. No one is ever going to accuse this movie of being too wordy. And it took three writers?
B. B. Where are you? Answer me. I I'm here, Mrs. March. She's locked us in. Victor! Victor! Well, you took long enough. The lawyer will see you in the morning. I told him you were going to change your will. You failed. the way Mrs. Marsh treats you. I can't say that I blame you. Kitty's always been very fond of me, haven't you? Does she have all the instincts of a cat? Watch. That Anita. Where? Oh, I don't think so. Look out! <laughs> Somebody help her. <laughs> now, wait a minute. He's been working in the basement. But now he's running downstairs to get outside. Back, hon. Back. I still think you should have locked them up. They're not about to leave this house after what they've witnessed. They know Hans is outside there. Even if we could get past that creature outside, there's still the electric fence. The phone's dead. We can't get help that way. If we could get the car... That's it. Victor! Victor! He likes me, I guess. If you could get the keys from him... Who do you think you are, pinching me? What? What? Maybe you like some company. As if Someone things like aren't me? creepy enough. Mm -hmm. That's more like it. Wait. Hans is chained. Let's go outside. Outside? I think I'd like that. Thank <laughs> you. 
Anita, what's the matter with you? Don't you know me? Anita, listen to me. It's... Ow! Ow! Happens to know there's a roof hatch and how to get to Let me help you. Why, are you a stranger in paradise? For anyone under 60, Stranger in Paradise was an insanely popular song in the mid-50s. The first line is, take my hand, I'm a stranger in paradise. Okay? Anita! Anita! Astonishingly complex, isn't it? The human eye. She's unconscious, but she'll live. No. She will live. How oh, I need her won't. She's dead. Nina, dear, come along with us now. You've had a bad shock. Get out of here, both of you. Why don't you do something for her? I've done what I can for now. Later, an operation might be possible. I'm preserving the eye. Let me show you. Come over here. The cellular structure is being kept alive by these electrical vibrations. I use the same principle in keeping that hand alive. Hand? What hand? D is a very lucky girl. You think that ironical? Let me explain. I'm the only man alive today capable of restoring your friend's sight. Dr. Alexis Carell, who pioneered the transplanting of vital human organs, kept a portion of an animal's heart alive for many years. For this, he received the Nobel Prize. And I, who have so far surpassed his effort. Surely you don't want to compare yourself with Dr. Correll. And don't call me Shirley. He was humane. I, too, fight to preserve life and to find the means to improve the lives of future generations. Your viewpoint is that narrow, ignorant one held by the medical society. The today. Alexis Carroll story like is this. true as far as it goes. A old woman. There's a lot more that is much more unsavory. Uh, uh, Nina? Yes, please. I, I can't see. What? Your eyes are very Something happened. Don't think about it now. Listen to me, B. Are you listening? This is important. Yes. We must be ready for Chandler. 
I remember now. It was Anita. She... Oh, my eye! My eye! My eye! My eye! Oh, my eye! They'll leave. The best chance to take effect. I'm a doctor. I'll take care of her. I'm sure you will take excellent care of her <laughs> until your plans call for something else. Or am I to be the next one, doctor? I made my hair appointment. I took care of everything on your list while you were talking with the lawyer. Hair appointment, Monday, 10 a.m., Charles of the Ritz, under Nina's name. Mrs. March had not realized her new body had such a satisfactory shape. Perhaps not as spectacular as the English girl, but in excellent taste. She couldn't help being amused. The stupid girl was not only modeling Mrs. March's future wardrobe, but Mrs. March's future body. So firm, so nicely rounded in places men like. You might have knocked when you came in, Victor. I'm sorry. Don't stop your style show on my account. You're not needed now, Victor. Close the door quietly when you go out. I'm not going to be needed at all. That's what you're saying, isn't it? After tomorrow, when... Victor! That's enough. Get out. That's the way it's going to be when what? You're not looking for me, are you? Why would a pretty young girl want to be around an old man? Good question. What Especially you. you. March? Mm -hmm. So that's what you plan to do. Get rid of old Victor once you get all that money. The only thing is, of course, it won't really be you. Victor, please tell me. Try to make sense. I am telling you. Tomorrow you'll be one of the richest women in the world. There's a press release that's in the mails now. To all the major news syndicates. Orphan girl sole heir to March millions. Nina Rhodes is a lucky star. I don't understand. The next press release will be March Mansion Destroyed by Fire. Cinderella Girl, Nina Rhodes, sole survivor. Only it won't be you. It's a pity, too. You're nice the way you are. Please don't let it happen. You could help me and B get away. When you're a rich woman, you wouldn't forget an old friend. A friend who'd saved your life, would you? Get out of the car. And stay there. Victor, we too. We must come too. Wait a minute. Just to make sure. Sign this. 30. I assume this is supposed to mean something. Or maybe it's just one of the non-directors trying to be dramatic without actually showing the stabbing. Please, you've got to come with me. No, I won't go. Why should I want to go on living like this? I'll get Victor to help me and we will carry you. Did you want something from Victor, dear? Sit down, my dear. I'm afraid you're wearing yourself out with all this rushing round. I don't like that. You realize she's mad, don't you, Dr. Frank? <gasps> Relax. Hurry, doctor. I'll be ready for you shortly, Mrs. March. I'll be waiting. Finally about to happen. You don't know what it's been like for me, living with this ugly body of mine. Knowing that any attention I received was not for me, but my money. 
Well, nobody got any of it. I've never known what it was like to be loved for myself alone. Why did you kill Victor, Mrs. Lynch? Victor? Victor was a fool. I'm a practical woman, Dr. Frank. A business woman. I've never been a very practical person. I suppose that makes me a fool, too, in your eyes. Of course not. Relax, Mrs. March. Just relax. Relax. That's a pretty small brain. Paper making Vicky a legal guardian. That's right, isn't it? I did tell you something, didn't I? That would probably work as well for me. We could stay here. None of this would have to be destroyed. You're doing better, aren't you? Why don't you try it on your own? I want to know if Mrs. March didn't intend blowing me up along with all the rest of this. Very wealthy woman now, Nina. What I must decide is how to keep you and your friends available. With the least amount of nuisance to myself. I could keep you under sedation until your signature was required. Or I could replace your brain with one more amenable. What about Mrs. March, Doctor? Mrs. March no longer has a thing to say. Do you, my dear? Completely recovered, I'd say. How do you feel? I guess a transplant would be better. It won't hurt. Dr. Frank had enjoyed this transplantation. Mrs. March's brain winding up in the body of a cat. Poetic justice to think of autocratic Mrs. March scavenging in back alley garbage cans for her dinner. But Mrs. March doesn't take things lying down. She did not intend to let her money get out of sight. She would follow that girl. Sometime, someplace, revenge would come.
I'm sorry. I don't like inflicting pain. Uh, but sometimes it's unavoidable. Now, I suppose I should give it some sort of review or rating or something. Okay. The script, whatever there is of it, is terrible. The direction is inept. The sets and set dressings are mainly good because it was filmed in a real mansion. The lab, of course, is laughable. And plot, <laughs> yeah, sure. The original director was a cinematographer, so you'd expect the lighting and photography to be much better. At least you'd expect there would be some lights. Maybe it's just the print. Sixty-plus years can take their toll on celluloid. But still, I did better when I was 18 years old with a Super 8 camera. And don't get me started on the music. The word juvenile comes to mind. So, yeah, everything you look for in a 50s B-movie. Most of these movies are entertaining in their own way. Many even aspire to the ranks of so bad it's good. But this one doesn't even try. On the plus side, some of the acting is actually decent. Frank Gersel, who played the appropriately named Dr. Frank, has a list of over 200 film and TV appearances. If you watched television during the 50s and 60s, you've seen him dozens of times. A very competent journeyman character actor. Although he does kind of drift through some of these scenes. Marjorie Eaton has only about 50 mainly movie roles as characters often uncredited like Housekeeper, Lady in Park, and other such background characters. This is the only starring roles they ever had. The three young ladies had a resume of about 50 TV and movie credits between them, largely as uncredited background characters. Their minimal experience is obvious. And Judy Bamber, played B, isn't English. She was from Michigan. And she owned the cat. Erica Peters was German, yeah, not Austrian, but close enough. As just a movie, I'd rate it no more than about 2 out of 10. But as 50s cheese, I'd go a little bit higher, maybe 4 out of 10. The concept has possibility, since, let's face it, it's just a twist on Frankenstein. But in competent hands, it might have turned out much different. Now, if you are a true masochist, you can buy it for yourself or view it on Prime. See the Amazon links in the description. Regardless, thanks for watching. You know, like and subscribe. You know the routine. And stop by again sometime.